<coughs> call this meeting, make the meeting to order. Recording in progress. May the 21st, 2024. Resolve of the agenda for May the 21st, 2024. Regular meeting of council be accepted or adopted. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Boitcha. Uh, Councilor Bob, go ahead. The adoption of the agenda, the under block. Oh, okay, we're there. <laughs> we're there. I'd like to bring forward uh, to put on the agenda to speak of the 100 block in the back alley between 8 and 9. So that was the outstanding uh, resolution from the last meeting. Okay. okay. Anything further? Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, it was sent to administration last week that the CEO is absent uh, an AMN resolution to be brought forward to the June district. Okay, you want to bring that forward? Yes, please. Okay, does the administration have a copy of it? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. Anything further? Okay, all in favor? It's carried with the, uh, I should say that it's the, uh, the amended agenda. Result the minutes of the May 7, 2024 regular council meeting and the May 14th special meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? And all in favor? Carried. Receptions and delegations and hearings. We have tonight Swan Valley Legacy Committee and Town Swan River signing agreement or agreement signing. So I think we'll maybe just do it right over here. And um, if the group wants to, well, who's going to be doing the signing? Um, okay, and then Jessica, so we'll come up here and then I guess we could have maybe the, um, the rest of the group behind us and maybe the other members of council behind us while we do this and then the photographer can take a picture of us. Sound good? Okay. <clears throat> So they're the same? Just top extend both. Yeah. We'll stand by the left. Yeah. Short up front. This must be a witness that's at the bottom here, so we'll just do these ones here. And then, oh, so when everybody's ready, we'll, we'll do them. <laughs> tell, them you, tell us when you're ready. Okay. Okay. Can't hold my stomach in much longer. Watch <laughs> Oh. Is the cover on? <laughs> <laughs> My settings are set for something else here. Hold on. It's not making that. Oh no. Yeah. My settings were set for lightning this afternoon. Okay. Here we go. Much better. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Well, I was wondering you're behind me. Perfect. Thanks, everybody. No, you have to stay. For the regular Thank you guys. Thank you. 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 I failed to mention also that uh, Councillor Medwood had said that she was not going to be present tonight. Okay, moving on to 6, 6.1. Yeah. 
resolve of the Municipal and Northern Relations Bulletin 2024-15 regarding property assessment information available online be received. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Powell. Any discussion there? Just good to see that now they can do this online. So I think most of the public has been advised of this as well. So all in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 6.2 resolve the approval letter for the town of Swan River submitted an <coughs> emergency plan as per section 83 of the Emergency Measures Act be received. Moved by Councillor Bobic, second by Councillor Powell. Discussion, Councillor White. I think a, a compliment go, should go to our administrative team. It's the first draft of our EMO <coughs> plan and it's been accepted right off the pop. So, compliment all the team that do that direct. And uh, thank you. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. 6.2. 6.3. Result of building permits from 1224 through 1924 with a, a total estimated value of $746,590 be received. Moved by. Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Um, <clears throat> I just got a question that for administration that can follow up. But we have one here described as 16 feet of fence for $90. Like, how do we determine, or how is the building inspector determining some of those values for some of them? So some of them seem high as realistic as to what it truly costs, but then there's some of them that you look at the value and doesn't seem so realistic. Go ahead. Yeah, those ones are put in by the person filling out the permit. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can check with Ron what type of fence that was, because yeah, that went very far. By two posts? Yeah. So, yeah, unless they were reusing the existing material. To I, I've just that. noticed that there's some in the past that some of the values are not corresponding to the work that's actually occurring on the property. So yeah, yeah, the, it's an estimated amount filled out by the person doing the work, but uh, we don't get them to uh, submit quotes or anything like that. So it's just what their best estimate is what they put on it. Okay, go ahead. And we, we've dealt with this over the past 15 years. We've had major issues with building permit values just not being representative to costs. And at that time, the last time it was brought up formally to council, council decided to leave it be, let the, let the owner mm -hmm. deal with the assessment branch, and really, that's, that's cool. But, but then yet, the building permit is based on the value of the permit. No, I, I'm not disagreeing with the way we do it. It's council's instruction to us informally on to leave it alone. So the, the building inspector is the <coughs> our expert in that field, and he should have a what a basic idea. So, correct, Dr. Uh It sounded like you said that the permit was based on the dollar, but it's based on the square footage, uh, or for like a deck or a fence that's just a per unit. So, what they submit as their price doesn't affect how much that the building permit costs, the building permit fee. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Seven, 7.1. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councilor Bobic, second by Councilor White. Any discussion? Councilor White. Uh, one specific today uh, on the uh, Arbor Day activities, uh, Mr. Harvey and his team had uh, everything done. Everything was smooth. And a compliment to his team, there were about 25 of us over there doing a dedication. And the guys were coming out over the sweeping the streets. And uh, they stopped about 100 yards, realizing there was a meeting going on. They turned around and went somewhere else. And I, I think that's a real compliment to that team, because it's noisy. The machine was noisy. And they uh, adjusted appropriately. So please thank them for us. Okay. Councilor Long? Uh, just reading here, finalizing an issue landfill study RFP. So we're putting out an RFP for a study or for engineering design? For engineering design of the uh, landfill 
so there's not it's not like a study of a different view. That's correct, yeah, okay. for design. But we have the rules and regulations of what is needed. Yeah. Is and what do we need a contaminated soil to test kit? Uh, we have contaminated soil that we've collected mm -hmm. and we've uh, aerated by turning it over and then we're just going to test it to see what levels it at and then we'll pull it out of the contaminated soil site once it's been treated. Okay, so those tests have to be submitted to someone? To ALS, yeah, they're an accredited laboratory. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Mario. <coughs> um, I noticed the, the, the New sweeper arrived and we put the work already. Yeah. The guys are appreciating and it's working out well with them. Yeah, yeah, they just arrived on Saturday. Thanks. Any further discussion? All in favor? There was a. Oh, I'm sorry. That's so, wrong. so would there be any time frame of both sweepers going? Uh, yeah, we're just wrapping up uh, this year's, but next year the plan is to send out both of them at the same time and see how that goes. So we're more or less kind of caught up already. We're yeah, we're getting close to work. Okay, thank you. Okay, further discussion? Now comes to Paul. Uh, just, just a quick question. Is, it, is there lots of uh, space at the cemetery still? Right now? Uh, there's a fair amount. We have about half of block 17 and then Block. Instead of being a block, it's going to be rows starting north of the columbarium by the closest to the road and then working back. Just because when we open it as a block, it seems that people hit the outside first, uh, but then it makes it harder and starts to fill up when you're dealing with the ones inside. So, uh, so then you want to just be uh, one row will be opened and to both funeral homes, and then once it's full, or like 95% full. Next row, okay. and then that way it'll be easier to uh, manage deal with them and not have to lose I think the town owns a couple acres just north already. There's nothing in there that makes open space. That's, that's only by the town. That's correct. Yeah. Lots of space. Any further discussion? All in favor? This is carried. 7.2. Result of the April 2024 Swan River Handy Transit Ban report be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bobbick, or Boitsha. Discussion? All in favor? <clears throat> Carry. Okay, reports. Uh, Councillor White. Thank you, Your Worship. We had our urban forest uh, meeting today, and uh, it didn't happen without a large spectrum of individuals. Uh, the town did a wonderful job. I've alluded to that. Andy Shaw from the Water Stewardship Department, he has the staff over there. Uh, the urban forest committee and their people, uh, Carrie Gady brought in, I think, 15 or 20 kids from the high school, and uh, it was just a, a very good activity. Earlier in the day, we did a, a memorial presentation for the uh, Rich Holler family. Ed and his wife and his son and daughter were there. We did that at 12.30, which is some time constraints. And uh, four or five of the original committee showed up for, for those presentations. And the pictures will be in the paper next Tuesday, I suspect. <laughs> it just went really well. I, I, we've got so many wonderful people donating their time and their energy as volunteers and the start time's coming. And, on, you know, we had goofy schedules, which changed all the time with the rain, but uh, they made it happen, and uh, I was just very positive about that. So uh, that's a uh, little basic thing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Powell. Uh, okay, so we have some of my Swan Valley Library. Um, we met with board and staff and had to meet with them. Um, I also have to say, um, library is going to be meeting with us. Castle Quall and Harding Company to present the budget. We will have that to the town um, right after. Um, our AGM will be announced on the 27th, so we'll be letting everybody know that. Um, Swan Valley Interagencies uh, meeting will be on June the 5th, 2024. Um, the meeting starts at 12, followed by a community organizations showcase, so that'd be kind of interesting at lunchtime, right after lunch. Um, 
On the 13th, we have transportation meeting. Um, also, what is this? I guess met with some folks that use a pool and they're planning on uh, putting a petition together regarding a pool spoilage. I don't know if this is where it is, but um, or the times there's pools, there's lots of disgruntled people, and um, they are planning to put a petition together in regards to the closures of the pool because they are, like they say, they're paying people too, and um, so it seems to be an issue. So. Councillor, can you forward those dates to us that you talked about earlier? Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Bob. Thank you, Your Worship. I um, attended a call meeting last week. I also spoke with a few rate pair, a couple rate pairs on Centennial Drive there. The road conditions, Councillor White was there. Uh, just as you have to mention, Mr. Harvey, Cool. What was any, any news on the turning like uh, uh, I haven't heard anything from the province. <coughs> I haven't heard anything from the province. Uh, the last lately, the last thing they said was they were putting together for a public consultation. Okay. I haven't heard any further on dates or anything like that. Okay, no, we're still in the queue. I guess. That's the last that we've heard from the province is that they're going to get together, but they haven't given us a date. Okay. Last week we went to the MLA. Oh, okay. Perfect. That Thank issue, you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, just looking on Facebook, there are lots of comments on the stop signs uh, that have been put up. Uh, good job uh, informing people, plus the signings of the flags and stuff. It's very different. But lots of good comments on that. It's, uh, uh, transportation meeting on uh, August 13th, a few things discussed. That's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Woodchuck. Okay, so after our last town council meeting, we had a June district planning meeting with the uh, yourself and the other Reeves, which was really productive. We've got a good uh, base going there for what we're planning on doing. Um, had the cow meeting, we had a fire board meeting, and um, are looking forward to uh, traveling to uh, Cote First Nation tomorrow to have a look at the uh, new arena there. And uh, we have reached out to uh, our First Nations and our surrounding uh, municipal uh, leaders to attend with us, but not sure who's all coming. Hopefully we have a few more than the mayor, myself, and uh, we have a representative from the Legacy Committee coming for sure. Um, and I did talk to a ratepayer today. Um, they were inquiring about the uh, bylaw we had uh, discussed as far as the uh, chickens. So I said nothing's been decided on that, and uh, it's coming up for discussion. And as soon as it's year and eight get back in contact with them but it was interesting that there's other people looking into that and that's uh, it for me for now okay thank you the premier memorial um just two quick meetings <coughs> this week uh it was the cow meeting last tuesday and then a fire board meeting uh to deal with some <coughs> housekeeping issues regarding the sale of the uh, uh, old thunder west fire truck where um, proceeds of the sale of that will be coming towards the town to be put towards the uh, purchase price of the new bumper one truck that will be coming here uh, so within probably the next month it will be here. So, and that's all I have. Okay. For me, uh, we just uh, came out of uh, Tim Horton's small cookie campaign and uh, they, the community raised about $15,000, a little bit more than that, but uh, which will go back to the Swan Valley Health Facilities uh, Foundation that uh, goes towards purchasing equipment that's needed for our facilities across the whole entire valley, uh, usually ones that may not necessarily be um, priorities by the Paramount Health and Health Province. So we're very grateful of the people that went out and bought cookies if they could and, and some, uh, <coughs> Tim Wharton's in this final cookie program. The, uh, the meetings with the Reeves and with Councilor Portchuk on the uh, Parkland District Planning Session went really very well. We're looking forward to that. We're going to have probably about 80 delegates that, uh, or 70 to 80 
that will attend, which is, uh, we've got some good planning going on, so thank you for all those that are helping us with that. And that's going to be here before we know it. Um, yes, we had um, some comments from people about the, the three ways, the four ways, and actually I had one thank you card sitting on my desk here when I got here tonight. So uh, there are people that are happy that uh, in some of those problematic areas of uh, traffic and, and so forth that uh, they're happy to see that. Um, then of course the last one was mentioned already, but uh, the uh, invitation from uh, Chief Cody from Cody First Nations. Uh, we're going to head up there tomorrow with the delegation to uh, attend their grand opening of their arena, check things over. They're going to kind of give us some insight of what they did and, and uh, you know the issues that they had and, and maybe some insight as well as uh, anything else they can help us with. So I did invite the chiefs to come with me, Chief uh, Janai and from Chief and Chief Zastri, but they were not uh, available, so they couldn't attend. There's three reasons I did invite them. But uh, they all attend. I'm still thinking that uh, Reed Gate is going to be attending with us tomorrow. So anyway, with that, uh, yeah, looking forward to, to meeting the chief tomorrow and, and making another connection and with, with our municipal and First Nations governments. <clears throat> That's it for me on that. Uh, anything from you? Sale pool? Did you have a question? No. Thank you. Just to. I apologize for getting my written report up this morning. Uh, I was away Thursday, Friday out of the office and had a great long weekend, but uh, so it, I didn't get a chance to update until this morning. <clears throat> but uh, I did add to my report just a requested item on the update of the burnt derelict houses around town. So if council wants to review that and if you have any questions <coughs> from on those, please send them my way. That's really it outside the highlights um, in the report. Okay, anything on that? Give council just to look it over. All right, <coughs> if none, we'll move on to uh, new business 8.1. Result the town of Swan would provide the Swan Valley Crisis Center with a letter of support for the proposed Women's Resource Center and Combined Shelter Transitional Housing Project. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? <coughs> it's carried. 8.2. Whereas the province of Manitoba and each health authority has a number of harm reduction networks with a mandate to coordinate efforts and support harm reduction within and across jurisdictions with the guiding principles of, rather than making judgments about where they should be, the MR, MHRN meets uh, people where they are at, MHRN focuses on promoting evidence uh, informed services that respect people's choices. The MHRN is peer informed, ensuring that people have a voice in the creation of programs and policies designed to serve them. And four, recognizing that the realities of social inequality impact STBBIs and substance use, the MHRN advocates for social justice and decolonization and whereas representatives for the town, our vision statement is to be committed to a sustainable future and to improving the social, economic, and environmental well-being of our valley. Whereas all Manitoba <coughs> sorry, whereas all Manitoba residents expect to have relative security and safety in their communities for their mental health and physical well-being, and whereas the harm reduction programming practices. <clears throat> provides free supply of injection supplies primary via the use of regular tubercillin needles that uh, sorry that do not prevent single use or needle safety uh, features that are all too often improperly disposed of and left discarded unsafely throughout our communities open spaces and recreational parks, putting innocent children and other persons at risk of increased needle stick uh, injuries and disease. Therefore, be it resolved that the AMM lobby the provincial government 
for the single-use retractable needle needles and implement a needle exchange program across the province of Manitoba, taking into consideration that safety of all Manitobas affected by the overwhelming drug epidemic our province and country is currently facing, and further be it resolved that the AMM lobby the province the provincial government to perform a study and or act on providing statistical measurable data with regards to the results of harm reduction and further confirm the total funds utilized funding these programs and the measurement of success relative to the costs incurred. Moved by <coughs> Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Bobbitt. Discussion, Councillor White. Uh, what a wonderful idea to have single use needles. Because then once they're used, as I understand that statement, they can't be used again. And somehow, I think part of the harm reduction process was that before they got new clean needles, which hypothetically reduce the possibility of transfer of contagious diseases, they'd have to bring their old ones back with some exchange. I'm wondering if it'd be appropriate to ask the local harm reduction people to come and give us an update of what they're doing and the successes that they're having, because I'm sure there are many. Because there's lots of things I'm not sure about. Uh, since this is a resolution to go towards AMM um, committee for hopefully presentation to our June district meeting and to make it more effective um, to be more province-wide not just town and valley specific, I would recommend and suggest that we remove uh, the second whereas where it says whereas representatives of the town or vision statement. Um, which is applicable to us only and not as a province as a whole, so I would recommend that we strike that. And then the last be further resolved. Uh, while it would be interesting to know what costs and measurable data, I think that uh, it's a lengthy resolution and asking that, uh, you know, I, you would never get that information as accurate. Because I don't think they, they actually truly track that. But, uh, uh, I think the goal of our resolution is to uh, make the harm reduction network uh, and that whole program more responsible um, for the needles um, that are left in our community and the public parks and that, that uh, are the tuberculin type where uh, there is no safety uh, mechanism on the needle or not used uh, and they're just left and used a second time but if they switch and or instructed to switch to the retractable needle uh, once it's used, the needle, once it's used, is just like a ballpoint pen, slips back up into the plastic and it cannot be reused again and cannot poke anybody. So even if it's discarded on the ground, it cannot be uh, a danger for poking people. So you're asking to have a, an amendment to the resolution that removes uh, the second whereas Correct. and to remove um, the uh, section that is asking about the, um, the, last the cost, paragraph. the last paragraph. So, um, do we have to do this separately or can that be all together? That can be all together. Okay. So then, the mover and seconder, do they agree to uh, to uh, the amendment or the removal of both? I agree to the first amendment. I would kind of like to keep the, the last one in just because I think that question needs to be asked. I know we're probably not going to get anything, but I think it would be good to put it forward to the AMM and to the provincial government that people are thinking of these things and, and maybe it's time that they do start keeping stats and, and providing some statistics of those programs to the public because there is a considerable amount of money being spent and uh, I think the public has a right to know where it's sitting. I mean, it's up to them whether or not they'll include it, you know, but it's not a bad thing to Absolutely. maybe get them thinking of it. Otherwise, yeah. So the mover does not agree to the amendment that's on the table. That's right. So the mover has not uh, agreed to that. So go ahead. Okay, so then just move the second whereas and leave the last paragraph. Okay. The mover and the seconder. I agree. Seconder. Okay. Um, we have to vote on that, right? Uh, yeah. <coughs> so 
is that just that we don't have, like I'll read the resolution again, but on the amendment, I just ask for a, a vote on the amendment? Well, we can, the friendly amendment is when the mover and seconder agree to the amendment that's on the table, and that, that's it. And so we, we don't need to vote on that. So we don't need to vote on that. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, so they then, need a separate so then we just need to vote then on the, the actual amended uh, resolution then. Correct. Okay. So then on the amended, I'm not going to read the whole thing, we know what it's all about, but um, on the amended resolution, do we have any more discussion? Okay. Go ahead. So this resolution is going forward to AMN, which this resolution was brought forward by the town Yeah. So it'll go to the AMN Parkland uh, Resolutions Committee that will look at all of the resolutions next, I think, if we, a week and a half, and then we'll decide whether or not if this resolution is, does have the criteria of municipalities to go to uh, the fall convention. Well, I think it's a good thing that uh, hats off to whoever brought it forward. And things like this need to go to the AMA that has a whole as a province and speak up. These are, this is happening in every community. So, good old server about this one. I, I guess one step. If it's if it's found to be, I don't want to use the word worthy, but it's almost if it qualifies as a as a resolution, then you will hear about it more at the June district, <coughs> and then it will move forward to the fall convention. Okay. okay. Any discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay. Nine nine point one unfinished business. <clears throat> resolved that the asphalt that has failed as a result of its exceeding its design life on the 100th block between 8th and 9th Avenue North be removed and the lane be maintained as a gravel road. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor Powell. So this is the discussion that we had during the cow. This is uh, some, some discussion. So now this is the time if there's going to be any uh, amendments to this resolution as per what we talked about in that meeting. Uh, Mr. Harvey, go ahead. Yeah, so from the cow, uh, it seemed like council's in favor of taking to a gravel road this year and then paving it next year. Uh, just the question would be on the pavement as to whether the repaving was done by the town because there was a local improvement done previously or if a new local improvement would be done for the pavement. There's just that information. Uh, that's discussed and decided that when I go to the residents, I'd be able to tell them either we're taking to gravel and yeah, we're going to be paving next year, or we're taking to gravel and if you want payment, there'll be a local improvement. Okay, so we'll let, if there's going to be an amendment, we'll let that happen uh, first. If not, then we'll vote on this. So is there any, go ahead, Councilor Bob. Uh, first off, I really don't know why we need a resolution to speak up about the call. It's just the maintenance and we're going to take the asphalt out. Put it in gravel. I think to let the residents know that it's going to be paid one way or the other is a great idea, but you know, to make a resolution just to do some maintenance work to me, I don't understand why we even need it. Uh, Councilor White. Uh, you're completely, because uh, I don't like that last sentence, it's going to be maintained as a gravel road. There's no indication of planning to be paid in the future. Zero it says it's going to be maintained, which is not the message that I've been. Okay, uh, I propose to make an amendment to the resolution that uh, where it says the 100 block between 8th and 9th Avenue North be removed and be prepared for asphalt repavement next year at the town cost. Okay. Uh, does the mover and the seconder agree? So then with that, then any uh, on the amended um, resolution. Any further discussion? Councilor Powell. Just the only discussion is that we had to talk about like whether or not this was going to be on the property or two, right? Have we not discussed? We just that was the yeah. uh, so Yeah, so I, I'm proposing that the town's paying the full cost and there's no local improvement. 
that's the amendment that I made. Okay. Further discussion? Councilor Bowman. Until that happens, I think we need to look at doing some maintenance here. I have the crushed asphalt to fill those holes in. But right now we have a trap there. There's holes for the water you can't see. So I don't know your time frame. That transportation was mentioned three weeks, but I think that's a little long to wait. I think something needs to be done there. If you're, you're going to recycle it anyway, it'll all come back. Your okay, go ahead. Uh, we need to speak to the resolution and not the maintenance of the road. Right. Okay. So, any further discussion on the resolution as it is? Okay. All in favor? I haven't seen the do it yet. Uh, okay. I'm going to have to. So I'm not going to go to that. Do you refresh? There it is. I got it now. Okay. So, on the amended resolution, any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. That's a good, good spot. 10, 10.1. <clears throat> Result of the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 3125 to number 31603, totaling $450,447.48 is listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5446 to number 5449 totaling $111,953.06 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposit payments totaling $17,207.52 as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? Councilor uh, Bobo. Uh, check 0031592DD West. That is the cost of uh, legal services for the pool lawsuit. Any further discussion? Councilman Boychuk. Um, check number 0031556. Second one from the top. And it's for? Uh, Centro Management and Consulting. That is our building inspector. That's his company name. Councilor uh, Powell. Um, Glenn, my was um, you are 0031573, you are Solutions Canada. Univar. Univar? Yeah, Univar. Go ahead. That's uh, ferrous sulfate. Okay. Okay, anything further? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.2 Result of financial statements for the 12 months ending December 31st, 2023 be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? This is our year end financials for 2023. All in favor? It's carried. 11, 11.1. Result of the bylaw number 10, 2024, being a bylaw to establish a fire hall reserve fund, be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Bobbitt. <clears throat> so I'm under the impression that this reserve is being started for repairs. Existing call? Yes. So I we also have a fire truck reserve. Why would we not just have a fire department reserve? The fire truck reserve is being repealed. This thing by law 597 is the fire truck replacement reserve yeah and that's being repealed to the new bylaw of the fire hall reserve so one is for the building the new one is for the building and we're repealing the one for the truck because the fire board will be responsible for purchasing trucks 
So I, I guess my question is, why would we not have one reserve to have both? Why would we need the two reserves? We won't. We won't. Because we're repealing the fire truck reserve. Okay. So then why would it be not just fire department? Because the most of it, the, the equipment and the, the vehicles, so that that'll be covered by the fire board, and the town has the ownership of the fire hall. For the discussion, the, the uh, town single responsibility is the asset, the hall. That's right. Everything to operate the fire department is the board's responsibility. Councilor Boychuk. Um, I'd like to make a, an amendment to this, hopefully a friendly amendment, um, that of that $116,800, 76000 of it um, be transferred to the actual purchase of the new fire truck, leaving a balance of 40654 in the fire hall reserve fund, therefore decreasing the debenture that will be taking out for that fire truck. What was the amount exactly? 76,000. And then the balance would be? Forwarded to the new reserve. Yeah, the balance forwarded to the new reserve, yeah. So I think that's right. So can you repeat that so everybody else that's not on the fire board understands what you were just saying? Well, we have $116,800 sitting here uh, in a reserve and we will be taking out an adventure for the difference on the fire truck. Uh, I believe it came in a couple hundred thousand dollars less than the uh, initial anticipated 900,000. Now we have the funds from the sale of the Thunder West unit that will also be taken off the cost. So it just kind of made sense to me that we take that 76000 that's there in excess and put it towards that truck and decrease the debenture that much more, still leaving us with a fairly healthy reserve should anything go wrong at the fire hall. So you're making that amendment as a move? Oh, well, because I, I was kind of confused. Like we will have to amend the actual bylaw that we pass, <coughs> especially on third reading. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I propose we table this so we can get the proper wording in the bylaw that we pass. Otherwise, you'll have to wait till me and see if we're going to amend the bylaw to the correct wording. And that could take a while. Okay. Could we just make a resolution after the fact, like pass this one as it is, and then make a resolution that yeah, money from that be transferred to that? No. no. Okay. No. All right. Once it passes, then you'd have to start all over again. And then go because this is third reading. That's right. second. We, we could. Yeah. So, so um, further discussion then. I make a motion that table this to the next council meeting so that uh, the CFO Ganita and Mr. Poole can. Make the appropriate changes for that. That's all. It's no second. Uh, okay, so uh, we have the motion to table. So we'll leave that for the next meeting. Then. Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, all in favor <laughs> to table. <coughs> Opposed. It's carried. Okay, uh, nothing in notice of motion, nothing in camera tonight, so we're going to move right down to members' privilege, and we will start with Councillor Bob. Thank you, Worship. Uh, I'm not too much to report, just the Urban Forest Committee had uh, a uh, tree or not a tree today in the name Ed Richaller's name, which I greatly appreciate what I'm doing. Mr. Richaller was a friend of mine, a teacher, my principal until the grade eight. Uh, he was Mr. Richard Hall forever until I met him on the golf course after we were out of school, then he was Ed. So uh, I, I really like that, that there's a treat. With that, I mentioned Mr. Atkinson and Mr. Gordon Cowan. 
all sort of two pillars of the community that I think we really have to put our heads together and something should be done. So I don't know what, where, when, but I will keep mentioning uh, just the only other thing is just to get close to a ride for a reason. We've got some fresh pancake mix that will be ready for go and some sausages from the Valley Meat Factory. So plan your calendars to come out for even just a pancake breakfast. Up What's the date of that, Tulsa? Uh, June 8th. And that's it. Okay. Uh, Councilor Boychuk. Well, I'm looking forward to tomorrow and checking out that arena. And uh, I have to say that the town looks uh, pretty spiffy with the uh, streets all cleaned up and swept. Um, I was wondering about doing something and it, just to put it out there. Um, I think a couple of us maybe have talked about it, but um, some other communities kind of have done it. Actually, I want to say maybe West Pacific or Sacramento just did it. I think West Pacific just did it. And uh, basically it was a challenge out to the community. In their case, there was a different kind of benefit to, to doing this, but I um, was wondering about setting a day aside in the spring that we could maybe challenge our business owners and communities and schools to take some time, maybe a half an hour or whatever sporadically throughout the day. Um, employees go in uh, pairs of two with a garbage bag and maybe weed the front of the uh, businesses or pick up garbage on a certain block, assign it, and just kind of spruce up the community and get outside for a half hour and smell some fresh air and uh, do some good while we're out there. Just a thought to think about. Yeah, cool. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, yeah, so hopefully I wasn't disrespectful to Council Bobbitt, but uh, just to his uh, uh, point with the 100, 100 block back lane there to no fight. Transportation be aggressively uh, maintaining it until the work continues on it so that it's not the canyons that it is. And then also just a shout out to all the paramedics out there that it's paramedic services week. So if you see them out there, uh, say hi to them and thank you uh, for the work that they do. Uh, sometimes it's not the best settings that they have to go out and do. And a lot of um, events, family events, or the things that they miss to keep our community um, with an ambulance in service. So. That's all that. Okay. Councillor Powell. Uh, okay, just a couple things. I know it's coming up close, coming up fast. Is um, June 21st, we have a National Indigenous uh, People's Day. Uh, we'll begin the sunrise ceremony with the walk and, and also the traditional uh, dance in the evening. So that's going to happen on June 21st. Um, just a couple of, I think uh, it's probably our biggest thing that's going on right now. Um, the only other question is, um, I've had a couple couple phone calls lately about parking on 9th Street. Has, is there some, has something changed there at all, or was there added parking about two so. hours on, on 9th Street? Whereabouts so. um, Close to the clinic, I think it is, close to the clinic? Nothing's changed. It's no? Really, it's been I limited think, for some period of time now. Yeah, I know the bio officer was in talking to me about signs. I'm not sure if he was getting calls regarding that or not. Okay. I just, I've had a couple phone calls. I don't know. I don't know if I... People were requesting two hour parking? No. Upset. Upset. There's a two hour parking. Yes. And just wondering if there's, this is new. And I was like... <coughs> that, that was discussed just before the election, the previous term, and it was decided to keep it the way it was. And, and maybe they've just again. gotten tickets, maybe the people, I don't know, I, but I just said, I don't remember, recall that, but I just find out, okay, so it's been there for a while. Okay. Thank you. Councillor White. Well, I'm just to concur with the Councillor's comments relative to uh, Mr. Collin and uh, Gary Kennedy slips in there too. Uh, two uh, special men in our community that did so much for the community, so condolences to all the families. But, we have the special men or women that do those wonderful things. It's pretty easy to, maybe not for Darren, because Darren goes up and digs a hole. The trees are accessible, put a little plaque on, cost you $20, and it's a recognition of the individuals and their families' commitments to our community. I, I don't think we can say thank you enough. I just came from a fish meeting, and the, the five members just came in. We netted $67,000. Mm -hmm. We used to net 15, 20, 
our expenses have gone down. I'll rephrase it, the food itself has gone down because we've been trying to tighten up a little bit. Uh, stocking fish right now, uh, and that brings a lot of money to our town. People coming in to fish and putting millions of fry. Uh, who went with me? Uh, Brian Hunter and I carried 600,000 walleye into the Lion Lake the other day. Now remember our quad, they're this big, they're very tiny, 1% survival, so it'll be 6,000 fish. And thousands of brook trout, rainbow trout are here. And I talked to a guy at the Fly Fisher Shack just the other day, and he's fishing tiger trout at Twin Lakes, and there's very few Manitoba cars. They're, they're, they're American vehicles, they're not province vehicles. That brings a lot of money to our community. And uh, last but not least, I want to thank Darren and uh, Derek for their quick response. Uh, Councilor Robic and I have a very positive relationship with the person that had the concern. I think he's very polite. But there's a two or three families now that I think about it. And I think that same day you guys had a, a machine over there. And I think it was a legitimate concern. And you guys obviously did too, or you wouldn't have been over. So thank you for responding to our bosses who live on that street. Thank you. Uh, see how cool. Uh, not much just speaking of recognition. I think uh, in the next cow we'll have the animal control bylaw coming up, but we do have a draft recognition policy that has never been passed, but discussed quite in depth in the in the past. But we have Mr. Kennedy, Rich and Holler, Callum to name a few, and there will be more. So the policy is not a bad idea to see what can be done to recognize our pillars of the community. Uh, and just to let council know, we're, we're very close to filling the third staff position in the office. Getting a start date. That's it. That's it. CFO Ganita. Nothing to report. Okay. Mr. Harvey. Uh, thanks to the Public Works employees, we had several uh, waterline digs in the past couple weeks, and those ones go late into the night. So I appreciate them putting in. Uh, late hours to get those done. And then, uh, personal note uh, with rodeo coming up. If anyone works at this or goes skiing and wants to help support uh, the ski hill, there's the Thunder Hill food booth. They're looking for volunteers. They can contact Jason Glory. And if you have kids that are interested in farming, that are interested in helping out with the down on the farm uh, the elevator display, they can come see me. That parents can come see me. <coughs> Um, just a couple quick things. Um, so council remembers my report last week or the week before about a disc golf presentation. So that individual has been in contact with me and he's been successful getting all of his sponsorships. So he would like to come to the cow next week for his presentation. So I'm going to add him to that. Okay. Um, he's very excited. And then another exciting opportunity we've been able to partner up with Kelvin Bordian for a beach volleyball court. So that's going to go at the arena on the south side where the small ice surface goes in the winter. On top of that, it'll be a little bit wider and then in the winter the ice will go on top. So we're going to get that. He's donating the sand, the geotech, everything. We just have to purchase a net. And uh, so that'll be fun. Interesting. And I don't really have much more to add than what I already said uh, earlier, so <coughs> thanks for everybody's comment. <coughs> Result this regular meeting of council be now adjourned at 7.53 p.m. Moved by Councillor Wichuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. <coughs>